Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Today, I have a special guest. Uh, would, you, would you be willing to introduce yourself? I am Jay Parker. I am co-owner of Dilly Green Bean Games and freelance writer for Artel Soaring Games and anyone else that throws me stuff to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. I, te I teach at one of the local colleges. And uh, today we're going to talk about Alien D role playing game. And I, I brought Jay along because uh, he's one of the few people that this 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 game this game system came out maybe about a few months ago. And he's one of the, actually you're the only person I've known that's actually run a few games so far with it. Um, I I want to say off off the bat that uh, I looked through this book. I like it. I, I was I was daunted at first. I was like, oh wow, three hundred thirty page book. When I heard you were um, game mastering this or or game mothering this, as I should say, um, I thought, wow, you, you must be either a fast reader or maybe played enough to feel comfortable enough to to uh, play this in front of people. Uh, but then when I finally looked through it, it's like, oh, it's not it's not a difficult system at all. Uh, what what are your thoughts about the system? The system is really easy, and you're right, it's daunting. You get the giant freaking book. And it's got tons and tons of stuff. It's kind of like the, the Star Trek game they came out with, right, for, for Modiphius. Like, you could con compile the rules into, like, a page or two pages to make it se make sense for the basic player. And Alien's kind of the same way. It, it's really easy to use. I went through the first time I read it, and I quickly just bookmarked what I would consider essential pages, which are, like, the Xenomorph pages, uh, the stress pages, and then where the, the occupations are so you can – you can refer back really, really quick. And also to the, um, oh, I can't remember. I don't have the book in front of me, like the talents and stuff, the, the skill base, all the skills and stuff you can have with your, with your character. So I kind of bookmark those sections and then everything else I didn't bookmark in the GM screens. It's helpful for sure, but you really, it's first time reading it, put bookmarks in where you, where you want to, you know, where you know you're going to use the material. And then from there, if you want to mess around with it, the biggest problem I had was like, as I was reading it, the, the community page was like, oh, the cards aren't right. And this isn't right. And like, I got the cards because like, I, there's no way if you're a new game master, when you look at Alien, it's, it's intimidating. Yeah. The deck of cards, if the deck of cards were flawless, would make that game, you wouldn't even need the book. Mm. So did you have it, any? I, I found it runs easy. Uh, did you have any difficulty running the game at all at, at a total con? No. And that's the funny part. I had never run it before. And then I had, I had the frog God guys there, which is, I'm in the industry, but it's still intimidating when you're like, when you're meeting like new, new industry people who have never gamed with before. And then I had the, the, the uh, restaurant review guy at the table. Hmm. And so it was, it was a very strange dynamic of, it's like we have a lot of now the restaurant guy I knew because he played in a game the year before with me, but the frog guy guys I hadn't actually sat down with the game before and it was easy because I had actually I liked the game so much I, I did a, a freebie. It was a whole module I went through, did all the art, put it in layout and stuff, and just loaded it up on their the Facebook group for uh, Alien and I ran the module. So everything was pre written. I I had really worked I mean I like to do guilty pleasure things. So it was easy to run because I had the stuff there. And it's not, as long as you've mapped it out because it's so story driven, it's an easy game. It's easy to, to run it at a table. I did find the second time I ran it, I ran it on Zoom and I forgot that we had used to initiative cards. So they mm. give you cards you give out to all your players for initiative. Totally forgot about those because we weren't sitting at a table. I hadn't taken the, the cards out of the, the deck and I was like, so we're all playing and someone split, they split the group up and it's like, Oh, this game all of a sudden doesn't make sense. I'm like, Oh, I need initiative. And I had forgotten about the cards cause they'd been, hadn't run stuff since Tolokan and we've been really, really busy around here and then at work. So I didn't even think about it. I just made, made it up as I went at that point. So yes, alien on zoom there, he probably needs like an electronic, um, thing to keep track of the uh the initiative unless you, of course you i mean you have the cards in front of you so okay but it, it's i don't know i i found it other than the initiative online part the second time i ran it it's it's pretty simple so all right how how do you handle like um the, well i should say do your players have trouble adjusting to to the dice that they had uh, i know it's different than the typical d20 
it's keeping the big thing with the dice because if you've ever played like hero escape mm. it's 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 a walk in the park so for me it was like oh dice hero escape oh this is easy and then when i ran <laughs> online i was like nobody had the dice other than i think james carpio had the dice when i ran it the second time and he was it so it was like what 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 do the rest of the people do it's like oh, okay well you want to have this number this color dice like a separate pile of dice just for stress and this pile of dice for this and this means and you know, so it was easy to convert over a regular dice. So, uh, mechanic wise, with the dice, it's a walk in the park, man. Yeah. I mean, as long as as long as you understand like what the what the numbers mean, I mean it's just it's it's no different than playing like the old uh, Vampire of the Masquerade where you had to have like so many you know tens or whatever. So. Okay. Um, now, Alien is you know we, we all know. The, what the monsters look like um and we've seen the movies uh private i don't know if you read the comic books as well um yeah. but uh did you have trouble trying to stall the well try to give the 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 aura of fear uh sometimes for monsters when you see their two faces they, they lose that that mystique about them that yeah. that fear factor about them did you how did you what did you do to create that tension with your players so for the the module I wrote that I ran, it was it was big. You can get it online, but it was like cultist. It had cultist factor to it. So here's these guys that go they get on a ship because they're trying to redirect it from hitting a hitting a colony. And so it was really I kept the the atmospherics and the writing dark and brooding. So then where they're chasing people around and stuff and they're trying to trying to figure things out. The first time they encounter a xenomorph, it's you know. They, they beat someone to the ground and the, the thing pops out of them and they're like, what the heck? And it was a blood burster. So then it's just like, you know, it, it, they're trying to figure out what to do. So they open fire on the cultists. So basically it's mass murdering everybody in the, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. And they're not paying attention to the, the, the little neomorph on the ground that finally wakes up and attacks. And as Skeeter Green learned the hard way, Alien is notorious for a very interesting catastrophic bodily damage. In, in his case, it was sucking chest wound, which is this <laughs> ongoing joke now. It's like, hey, how's your sucking chest wound going? Yeah. Um, so it just, it, it's really up to the storyteller. I mean, you can do Colonial Marines, you can still make it like, like what's going to happen? Um, so when I ran it the second time, one of the players, he, he was on the outside. Of, it, it was kind of like a spinoff from the, the, the Ghost Ship module I wrote. And he was outside the ship scraping parts off and he punctured a suit. Well, it had some of the, the cells from the, the ship that had just blown up on it and he got infected. And so as the game's going on, I'm like, I messaged him on, on Zoom and I was like, yeah, he's starting to sweat a little bit, not, not feeling great. And so by the time they get ready to put themselves in the freezer, he was, he was actually having the full, you know, he's coughing up blood. He's got, it's like, so I was describing it very graphically and people were like, dude, this is too much. And I'm like, <laughs> what? It's like, have you never experienced? It's like, oh yeah, okay. Not everyone's not everyone's worked the jobs I've worked over the years is going to experience gore like this. It's like, <laughs> okay, so we'll just tone it down a little bit. We'll, so, but it's all, it's all in the storyteller. Like literally Alien does not work if you do not know how to tell a story. <laughs> and that's, for me, that's literally, I'm not a story type game master but in the case of alien it has to be that story otherwise i mean look at the movies the move the the first movie had had that fear factor to it you know the second movie still had a fear factor it's like there was tons of them and they're they're kicking everyone's kick kicking everyone's butt you know in the comics the, the classic comics back in the day they still had that gore factor so yes the comics like i've got a shelf at my house it's probably about i don't know four feet so it's about three feet of nothing but alien straight paperbacks so in the dark horse collections too so hmm. yeah it, that was the stuff i grew up on back in the day the old dark horse stuff so never going to get a movie that has a dark horse quality story though yeah yeah i know i know <laughs> um so uh Anyone that wants to pick up this book and want to game master it or run it or play it for the first time, um, is there any advice, anything you would like to warn them or tell them ahead of time? Yeah. Don't get attached to your characters. Make yourself, just like 
Dungeon Crawl Classic, make yourself a pile of expendables. Because there's a very good chance that, look, the aliens are tough. And, and they really, if you don't, the good thing about the game is you can, once you do an action or something, or you do something, you do it well, then you don't have to re-roll for it. But the aliens are relentless, and those things are, like, you look at the, the stats, and in com the combat stats for them, and then even when I pitted, like, one against a bunch of Marines, it did a lot of damage. It really messed people up. So you you got to make sure that, like, if you're going to run it, like I said, go through the book and bookmark your stuff. Have an idea in your head what you want to run. Map it out and map it out well. And think of everything that you would do if you were the player. I mean, it's pretty much take two weeks, sit down, and spend three hours a day just mapping the whole thing out. If you're the player, don't get attached to your character. Have fun with it. And if you're going to go, collateral damage, baby, just take them all out. <laughs> Especially Excellent. as a company guy. If you're going to die, you might as well just blow up the ship and kill everyone else or, or open the airlock and suck out a couple you know, players while you're at it. I mean, okay, that's horrible, but I, <laughs> I'd play that way if I was going to. If I'm about to get my head chopped in by an alien, I'm popping the airlock and everyone goes with me. But, uh, so before we go, um, I'm just out of curiosity. Um, uh, how did your players end up at the end of the Total Con session? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh Skeeter Green ended up with a sucking chest wound, and he's infected. The company guy, I think he made it. They blew the engines of the ship, and they caused it to break apart, and it basically broke apart in the, the shipping lane with all these ships going through, and then it rained down on the colony below. So it, the players, I think all the players survived. It's just Skeeter's, he's screwed. I mean, he's, if I run another session with him in it, it's going to be him just blowing open with a, with a neomorph. So <laughs> it's like, what are we going to do? It's like, put him in the freezer. So it, it just, it went from being a, hey, you're going to, you're going to talk to cultists who have apparently been missing for like 80 something years. And you're going to try to find this guy. And it turned into, that dude came at me, kill them all. And they like, pulse rifled everybody which the, the way the, the creatures were set up on the, the adventure were that if their adrenaline kicked in the the neomorph would burst out of them the blood they they burst open so they were as long as they were calm they were fine and there were also neomorphs walking with full grown full, full grown neomorphs walking around dressed like cultists that wouldn't attack the cultists because they recognized them as more other neomorphs you can read the you can read the thing online it's on their the facebook group it's a whole PDF, all you know, with the whole story and, and all the characters and everything. So, oh, which uh, it's, which it's, which Facebook group? There's a there's a free pro, uh, free league alien Facebook group. Okay. That they have, and they have like a file section, and in there somewhere there's one that says Ghost Ship Freebie Module, and it's all in there. I think it's like thirty something pages. I had it printed up, and I gave my only copy I had to, to Zach Glazier. Because I was like, he's like, oh, he's like, he had the the books with him. Like, well, here you can have this. I wanted to have a a total con exclusive. You know, so it's like <laughs> it's not even my product. It's free, and it's like and I did this for free. But here is like because the conventions, I see all these great stories about people coming from, from conventions that have like just stuff that companies have thrown together or people have thrown together and put it in, you know bind it and just give them out. And it's like that's that's really neat. It's like I'm gonna try something this year. I'm gonna actually do that with something that I have no business relationship with and i'm just going to give it to somebody and then we'll see like i don't know 30 years down the line and when i'm dead you know how if it did anything so okay i'll see if i could put a, a link in the description below well well thank you very much jay for your time i really appreciate you taking a moment to talk about your experience playing uh, alien rpg um, thank you everyone for watching. Um, if you have questions for Jay, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'll be happy to forward it to him. And uh, yes, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.